Oh, so, so, so pretty. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm great. I just wrapped up last week's vlog a few minutes ago. It's pretty misty, so I'm starting things off on my phone. I apologize for the low quality in that regard, but it won't be for very long. Shouldn't be, anyways. Just have to move more slowly so things can get focused. So, last week's video, I got all the plants moved out, which is a week ago for y'all, but about maybe five minutes for me. Plants are all out, and then I talked about how this area, there's a broken table, had to get that area all cleaned up and gutted, got that done. So now I just need to take this table, move it over here, so that way in the morning, the new table can be delivered and go in the spot, and then can do some more cleaning and tidying. We'll talk more about all of that. I just wanted to get this intro part done because I'm about to move this table, but it's raining, so I didn't. I just want to make sure that we had all this. Does it, does it even matter? Hopefully when we come back tomorrow, there'll be another table out here and can start doing things with the plants. Oh, well, that looks really weird. I haven't ever seen this space so wide and open before. I went ahead and pulled the other table over there. Now that's a giant mess, but it's all right. Working through it. Need to take that down to the basement. Don't need pumpkin things out here anymore right now. Well, for one, I should clean that up. But I was thinking before the new table gets here tomorrow, I've got this out of the way. Maybe I should probably go ahead and pull this planter out because clearly that's not working there. It was only intended to be a winter thing anyways. and. Well, yeah. This big queen palm that's right here, and that big round planter, that goes over here where this magnolia tree is. So it would probably make more sense to try to make that move right now than, what, why am I talking about it? It's raining, I should just do it, right? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? I just started to pull this pot out and a giant centipede, at least three feet long, came flying out and it was, it was trying to kill me. Three feet long, two inches, potato, potato. And better. Still needs cleaning up, but better. That's enough. I don't want to film any more on my phone. I'd like for this video to have some kind of quality to it. This is just, just getting things started. What, what do we think? I know. Kind of looks the same, doesn't it? Here's what's going on. It's just a new table for right now. It's not just a new table. It is a very, very, very large, pretty table. There weren't a lot of eight person tables to choose from and that's what I needed. By not a lot, I mean there were two. Those are the only options. There were plenty to look at online, but uh, I, I'm one of those people where I prefer to see it in person before purchasing. So went around a lot of places in St. Louis and this is, this, this was pretty much it. There were rectangular tables, but I just kind of liked something that was a little bit more compact. Not that this is compact. This table is absolutely gigantic. Nice ornate top to it. I am going to miss having a glass top. I couldn't find anything with a glass top that seats eight people, and it has a spinner in the middle, which is super nifty. I've already had other people out here sitting, and it's been really useful being able to just set something down and spin it and move things around to pass them. I like that feature. Still on the hunt for a new umbrella. You know, last summer, I, for the life of me, could not find a 10 foot blue umbrella that was vented. Then when I did, I snatched it up and it was super cheap. Hence why it's broken. And this year, 11 foot blue umbrella, no would be found, but there are tons of 10 foot ones. What's that about? The table that was here is now over here, right? I know it's a mess. I have all my frost claws and things sitting out, drying off so those can get put back up into the attic. And then I'm gonna get Everything that's on here cleaned up and put away and hopefully in a month, probably six weeks, this table will be gone. It's gonna go to someone else. So the original plan was that both tables would be gone and there would just be one big table out here and then a conversation was set. But Tiki Bar, the robin's nest in there. I'm not gonna tear down a bird's nest. The whole thing needs to go because it's just falling to pieces. I'm not gonna kill baby birds. So it can just wait. It's fine. Not a big deal. What's the rush, right? And just yesterday, the robins fledged, but they like left the nest and then they came back for a feeding. One of the babies is still over here, I believe. Yep, there it is. Hello. Don't worry. I'm not going to get too close to you. So that was the original plan. So now I'm just going through, doing a lot of little things. Actually, I've done a lot. 
since the last time I was out here and I was filming, like a lot, a lot. I took several days off from filming and just kind of enjoyed gardening. I moved, as you can see, a lot of plants around the Eureka Palms over here, got the Dragon's Wing Begonia. I have a whole bunch of stuff laid out and ready to set up and put over here, the Adenidia Palms over where it always goes. And I have like a whole bunch of tropicals down over here and down that way, kind of lining this pathway in here. I'm a little confused as to how to handle this video because it's about time to do a garden tour and I feel like it would be incredibly boring for everybody if I were to... Oh, okay, and there's the other thing that I had been working on was the drip, the drip irrigation. Um, spent a good three or four days working on that and here's the... Well, here's a drip head that I need to replace. I can't tell if you can see that on the camera or not. Right, so I need to put a goof plug in that drip line. Good to know. I'm gonna get right on top of that. But as I was saying, with this video and then there being a garden tour coming up, it's like we're gonna spend who knows how much time walking around doing stuff out here and then the next video will be a garden tour of me just reiterating everything I did. I don't really know how to handle that. Usually the week before I have a garden tour video, I try and do something that's not at the house or something really focused in one area. So uh, I guess that's what we'll do. We'll just forget about all the other stuff that's been going on. I'm just gonna kind of focus on right here. There's plenty to do right here. Lots of fun things that can be done. I need to set that. that. I'm gonna go shut the drippers off and then come back with a whole bunch of plants to pile up here on that queen palm and play around with things. Here we go. All fixed. One of the adapters that goes into the hose down there had broken off. Pluck that out and pop a new adapter in and get things up and going again. I'm gonna go ahead and let my drip in this area do its thing so that I don't get soaking wet so that the camera doesn't get soaking wet. And then, like I said, I'll go around. I'm gonna, I have an idea of what I wanna do right here in this pot but you're gonna have to play around with it and watch the sun a little bit. Well, you'll see. Okay, drippers are done running. I have a few bromeliads and caladiums over here. Let me see here. For this planter this year, I didn't wanna go too, too over the top. It's gonna be kind of over the top. The sun's kind of harsh. There's gonna be a lot of shadows here, so I apologize for that. I wanted to keep this planter I was going to say simple, but you know how I do things here. It won't be that simple. I'm putting bromeliads in here. See them? Aren't they pretty? Three different types here. I like those together. It's a good color combination. I like that a lot. It looks even better in person. This lighting is terrible today. And then I went over to where I had my little plant hoard <laughs> over on the other side of the yard and grabbed a whole bunch of gorgeous caladiums that hopefully you can see right now and some dragon wing begonias. Look at the leaf on that caladium. Isn't that stunning? Unfortunately, there's no label on it. It was just an assorted caladium. I wish it had a name because it's absolutely beautiful. And I don't know if the leaves are so pretty and striking right now because there was a lot of cool weather at the nurseries over the last several weeks. Not now. I think it's supposed to be 90 today. But, you know, the past month has been pretty cool and chilly. Sometimes those temperatures will give plants some different colors. That could be the case here. I don't know. Hopefully this will stay because they had three different ones that looked pretty similar. I shouldn't say different ones. They had three of these caladiums that all looked very similar. So I'm hoping that this is actually what they will continue to look like. And I figure I can tuck these in right behind there on each side and those will hopefully grow up. That's the problem with not having a name to them, like a label or anything is how to, I don't know the height on that one, but hopefully it will come up. And these will be just a smidge shorter when I get them planted down in here. Oh, look at that leaf. Isn't that absolutely stunning? It's so pretty. There's another one. See, that's another fun thing about whatever caladium this is. Every leaf is so uniquely different. Like, look at how fun and heart-shaped this one is right here. More red than green, and this one's longer and has a really pretty fun aeroid flower going on it right now. Absolutely love these. Hopefully they will stay looking this beautiful. Pop this one in right there. Okay, and then I popped a couple of dragon wing begonias right behind all of those. The thing with this setup here, well, one, I need to make some adjustments. Things are a little wonky, but I need to watch the sun. This particular type of bromeliad, they don't like much sun, and I'm not positive what the light's going to be like over here. The sun's always shifting and always changing. And uh, as this bamboo flushes up, well, that's not gonna provide much shade towards the middle, but this queen palm, it has a big spike spear in the middle that should open up here fairly soon. And another frond that's just opened up not long ago. 
and as the frond that just opened up, which is on the back side here, you can't even see it, as this one opens up, that should relax the others to come down more, which will shade this area. Those are all things I'm trying to keep in mind here. The caladiums, usually if they have a good amount of red in them, normally they can take a decent amount of sun. That's just a general rule of thumb. It's not always true, but I think those should be okay with sun. The bromeliads are what I need to watch out for. So I'm not going to actually plant the bromeliads just yet. I'll go ahead and pop the others in. I'm just gonna throw them in there. You don't have to watch it. It's not gonna be that exciting. I'll throw some compost and stuff around them and some slow release, that's about it. The other planters here on each side with the bamboo, I am absolutely in love with the combination of having these gold dust plants, the Akuba Japonica, Mr. Gold Strikes. That's what these are here in the front. There's two right here and two over there right in front of the bamboo in each one of these pots. There's just something about them. I don't know what it is, but this combination with those blue pots and the bamboo behind them makes me just feel calm and relaxed. And that's what I want out here. I want patches of color and a nice tranquil foliage. In years past, I've done these up with like lots of impatience and begonias and had trailers and things coming out of them. You're gonna hear me blowing a lot because they're these bugs out here, gnats that fly right for the face. So I'm gonna be blowing them away. That gets annoying, I'm sorry. Just not trying to eat bugs right now. Anyways, long story short, same situation with these Akubas. They don't like a lot of sun in climates that get pretty toasty. If you live in a climate that's more mild and temperate, they can take a good amount of sun. Their tag will always say, like usually part shade to shade, but I've seen these grown in sun on plenty of occasions. Full sun, meaning about six to eight hours of sun a day, but usually the afternoon sun is shaded. So they can get bright, intense sun all morning long, but usually shaded in the afternoon. If you live someplace with really warm summers like I do. So, so far, this area mostly just gets morning sun, but the morning sun, pretty intense. I don't want to make the mistake of just hoping that as the queen palm up there flushes out that that's going to help shade them. I think that what would be smartest to do here would be to go ahead, pot up the bamboos that are in the back of these planters and faux plant these akubas, meaning just fill in the rest of the pot with soil. And if it's looking like it's gonna be too much sun, then I can just lift those and pull those out. I had actually gotten these for a different project, but I've just, I've fallen in love with having them over here. So I'm gonna try and make it work, but really it's just gonna be a matter of sitting back, watching and seeing how they do. These two pots, one on each side, the blue pots with the akuba and the bamboos, those have been set up for several weeks. Maybe, well, okay, maybe like three weeks, three or four weeks. I don't remember when I got the bamboo, but that's about when I did this. I'm pretty sure I already had the Akubas in here, but the temperatures were cooler. It was cool at night, maybe 70 during the day. It was a very mild spring. As it gets more warm with this pavement below it, that's where I start to get more nervous. They already have some scorch on them, but I think that that was from winter time. I'm not positive though. They're really nice plants though. I don't want to risk losing them. So I'm going to pot the bamboo up pop it out of its container, fill these in with some soil, and then uh, kind of sit back and look at these for a little while and decide what else I want to do. The alternative, what I would like to do if the Akubas aren't gonna work there would be to put begonias in the front of each one of these, just particularly the dragon wings. I like how they come out. They cascade with their little dainty pink flowers. There's just something kind of tranquil and elegant about them. It has a fun, uh, like, natural appeal to it, but it's not something that looks totally wild at the same time. You know what I mean? It's not too formal, but it's also not too chaotic and out of control. That's all I was saying. But like I said, I'm going to give it some time. I'm going to sit back and think about this, and we'll get back to another project or working more over here. I don't know. I looked at the forecast, and it was going to be nice and cloudy the next day, so I thought... I'll just wait till the next day. Today, a little bit better. It probably looks the same on my little viewfinder. It looks better. I went ahead and got this bamboo potted up in here, blended up the soil. It's a coconut based soil that I mixed with some compost just to help enrich it a little bit, added some earthworm castings, popped that bamboo in there and then put those akubas in. And then I decided, I, don't, I just don't think it's a good idea. I really want them in there. I know I've expressed that already. But the thing is with the bamboo or any plant in general, I just think that it would be better for the plant to be able to have more even moisture in the pot. If I have those two big Akubas in their nursery cans in there, that's going to disrupt the way that the moisture is distributed and been um, available to the bamboo that's in the back. So I decided to pull it out. Much as I wanted it in there, it's okay. I can still do some really fun things in these pots. And the Akubas, you know, I got those 
to put up uh, along my hillside. That was the original plan with them anyways, and then the neighbors pulled a bunch of their shrubs out, now there's a big open gap there. I'm probably just going to end up throwing a whole bunch of cheap arborvitaes up in that area because I want like instant privacy. So I don't think they'll both fit up there, which is fine. Cause like, I actually, I really enjoyed put, having the Akubas uh, out here last winter and being able to move them around. They add so much color and I only have to bring them in on the rare, very rare occasion that it drops below 10 degrees Fahrenheit. That's why I didn't want to pot them up directly into these containers because the bamboo, they'll be able to take it. This bamboo is a zone five. Those Akubas, they're like a seven. You can grow them in zone six. I've done it plenty of times, but occasionally you'll have a really harsh winter, like the two weeks we had this past winter, that would just kill them. They needed to stay in those pots while they're still in the nursery can so I could lift them out should we have those really extreme colds. I think that overall, it's probably just better to just not. Right? I'll go ahead and keep those separate and then I have an area over here where I think that those will look fantastic deep into the shade and then I won't have to worry about it. But that does bring us back to getting to have some fun creativity time. Fun creative time? Creativity time? You get it. I have a whole bunch of these Dracaenas down here. These are Dracaena reflexes with the variegation on them. Really fun plants. I think that those will have a similar aesthetic kind of maybe <laughs> to the Akubas. I'm not going out and getting more plants. I have more than enough here, so I'm working with what I got. Oh good, the sun came out. So I could put a dragon wing begonia right there, something like that. And on the sides, maybe just one. I don't know if, I think two might be too much. And then this begonia is going to grow way faster than these Dracaenas. It'll be up here and have the fun, pretty foliage with those nice dangly flowers over everything else. No, I like that, because the thing is I really love the way these Dracaenas look with the blue on the pottery. So, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna think about that for a minute. Oh, and the other thing, this pot right here gets a lot more sun, as you can tell, from that pot. Now they're only a few feet apart, but just the angle of the sun and everything. Hello from Shadow Me. And the reflexes should be fine with that. I think that it would be just as good in the shade as it's going to be over here in the sun, as long as it, there's plenty of moisture around the roots. It shouldn't be an issue. Hmm. I'm gonna keep poking around with my plants, see what else I have and see what I come up with. Down to the plant shop, see what we've got over here. You can see there's a lot of stuff to choose from here. Now, almost everything here is to be used in this backyard. I do have several things that are for other projects for other people. I have these Plumbe Metallica Alocasias that I was hoping to have kind of front and center over in that seating area and I think those will work. I've grown these in sun and shade. When they were in shade, they had weaker growth, but they still kept going. So this might be a good option. But they do have some pretty big root balls on them. I could probably make that set though. Persian shield, I think I have two of those left maybe. Is that it? Yeah, there's only two of those left because I used two already. I had four. Oh, impatience. Hmm, it's just morning sun over there and they get just as much morning sun right here in this spot as they would in those containers. And I love them, they're easy, they add a lot of color, but they can be kind of messy when you have them in containers that are up high, they'll drop their flowers. Oh look, another dragon's wing begonia. Turns out I had two more, I thought I was out of these. Okay, that's right, I remember now. I had enough so that I could do the containers that we're looking at right now and enough to try and get some around the Adenidia pump. I make my plant list so early, in, not even early in the year, late the year prior, like in the fall and winter time, and then orders go out, and then I have my list down and do my shopping as soon as the things come out, and then sometimes when it actually gets time to planting, I'm like, wait, what? What was the plan here? It's a good thing I saved those lists, but it just, well, I never go back and look at them. So purpose slightly defeated when I forget to do that, but I'm remembering, it's okay. Ooh, I might need to put a pause on planting and do some watering here. It got up to like 90 yesterday, and things are looking pretty, Thirsty, what's going on up there, you guys? Hello, calm down, calm down. Trouble in paradise in the spruce tree. Now there's a plant that needs to get out of its pot. Wow, so pardon the background noise. I've realized that if I wait to film videos when there's no noise outside, that I, I'll never film. There's always something going on out here with one of the neighbors or something. It's part of being outdoors, not a big deal, right? This one did not want to come out of this pot, but I think that that should have been enough to, yeah. Look at that, let's slide right out, perfect. Now, did I leave a big enough hole? I don't know. Yeah, I'd say that's about perfect. I'm gonna need to kind of twist it. Ultimately, that doesn't matter, right? Because the whole point here is that eventually, 
the bamboo will fill out the entire pot. I like it. It's not the same as what I was hoping for that I would have had with the Akubas, but it'll do. I'll go ahead and get these planted up so that they match. You can see down here I already got the dressing. Well, you'll see. You'll see. We'll be right back. Okay. All done over here just because I decided to call it quits. I was, my head was spinning because I'm not going to lie. I don't love it. I love this in the middle. Beautiful. Fantastic. The two bamboo planters are just so drastically different from what I've ever done over here that it's going to take me a minute to warm up to it. And the begonias and things are going to need to fill in for me to like really enjoy this. Because the thing with the Dracaena, the uh, Reflexa, the variegated ones, is that, oh, well, that lighting is much nicer. In bright, intense sun, the variegation on them, I think, makes things look kind of dried out. Sort of dried out and washed out. And oh, with the Akubas that I had over here, that deep green glossy foliage helped create more of a cool, lush tone to everything. However, that's why I made sure to put those dragon wing begonias in there because they have nice, deep green, glossy foliage. So once those come up from the center in these two pots, that's going to make a drastic difference. And then I went ahead and I grabbed some Creeping Jenny out from the garden and tossed that into the front of both of these pots because they have that nice, deep green. They have a nice, lush appearance to them. I think that that green looks great against the blue. I didn't want a ton of flowers over here just because they get sort of messy. I've always had lots of flowers over here and as much as I'm saying I don't love it, uh, it's because sometimes it just takes me a minute with change. That's all it is. I know that I'm going to like this, but it's going to take me a little bit to get used to it. As things fill out and grow, I, I'm really going to enjoy it. I'm not expecting much growth out of the Dracaenas. They're more just in there for accent. But as those creeping jennies come down, the dragon wing begonias will go up. I did pop in some uh, caladiums in each one of the blue planters, the frog in a blender. They're small, so you can't really see them yet, but those have a really nice, cool tone to them that I think will accent this nicely. Uh, I could have thrown coleus in the front of these. There are lots of coleus varieties that would have had a very similar impact to those Akubas. <clears throat> Gnats flying into my mouth. Oh, you having a swimmy party, Toby? You haven't even been in this video yet, have you? I don't think he has. Shake off. Don't come over here. There you go. Good boy, Toby. Good boy. Always very easily distracted by my pets. As I was saying, there are lots of coleus types that I could have put in here that would have had a similar impact, but they still don't have that glossy foliage on them. And I want to work with what I have here. I, didn't want, I don't want to go out and get more plants. Y'all saw what was going on over there, my little nursery shop I have set up down there. I don't need any more. So it's done and uh, I do like it. I just don't love it, but I will. In the middle, I got those caladiums potted up that I showed a little while ago in the video. Really wish I knew the variety name on these. If anybody has an idea, please, please, please comment down below. I always feel so bad when I'm talking about a plant that I absolutely love and I don't have a name for it. But with caladiums, there could be, you know, like a dozen different types that look just like this one. So I don't really want to take a guess. And as I'm pretty sure I said before, the coloration on this could just be because these were at the nursery during that cold snap that we had. And this could just be a response to that cool weather. I have no idea. But comment down below if you have an idea. And then I did put one Persian shield right here, right in the center, Strobilanthes dirianus. Awesome plants. I was going to put one behind each begonia. There's dragon's wing begonia back there. And back there, they just, they need to come up higher. I should have zoomed out when I said that, but it doesn't matter. You can't see them yet. They'll come up above the caladiums just a smidge. Though I don't know what kind of caladiums these are, so I don't know how big they're going to get, but that's the idea here. You can always move things around and make adjustments if that's not what happens. It's another reason. It's nice to have labels on plants so that I could have some sort of idea of how big these get, you know, caladiums. They have lots of size variation. The Persian shield I like in here. Didn't think it was going to work having one on each side of this palm trunk because this side right here, back further, that would have been deep, deep, deep shade. And uh, I just, it wouldn't have looked even. It's already not going to look even over here. That's why I figured it made sense to just plop one here in the middle. And that also works because these bromeliads, chances are in like, I'd say six weeks, maybe six to eight weeks, these bloom stalks, the bracts right here, the flowers are down inside. This is just what holds the flowers. Those are going to start to fizzle and fade and die off and then I'll be pulling this and then there will be something in the middle. So having that Persian shield there works out in a lot of different ways. It just looks pretty, it adds more color and contrast and it'll be nice to have that there when those bromeliads fade. In the very front of the container, it's looking a little bit straggly but there's a Tredescantia nanook 
in the front. It'll trail down nice and tightly with fun variegation on it. It's a pretty plant and more foliage. More foliage, the better. Lots of different shapes, colors, contrast. That's what I want so that it's not too loud and too extreme. And as things grow, I think they'll look more manicured. But these Dracaenas, the Reflexes, they have a wild growth to them. They curve and go all over the place. So having them look symmetrical between this pot and the other one, I mean, that just wasn't going to happen. Which I think was another reason that I was sitting back for like 20 minutes and I was like, I don't know, this is bugging me, but it's okay. That's something I have to accept in this spot because the growth here is never even. It's always kind of like this. There's always more height on this end and then it comes down smaller and smaller because more sun to more shade. And there's nothing that can be done about that. It just is what it is and I'm okay with it. I had thought about maybe putting some of these trio stars into these planters, but I don't think it's a great idea particularly. I mean, I think it'd be fine in this container right here, but there's really no room to squeeze them into the middle container. And then the one all the way down there on the end, I think it would just be way too much light for them. Those trio stars, if they have constant access to water, they can take a surprising amount of light for Astromanthia. Last year I had them in floating planters and they got a good six to eight hours of sun, but they were floating in water. So I, they're, they're not gonna have constant access to water in these containers. Even on drip and everything, I think that that would just be overkill. There's that, things are still messy, but it's okay. I'll get things cleaned up for the garden tour. This is a vlog, I'm just going through getting some work done out here, right? Now I want to focus more on this area. Oh, and with the Akubas, backing up when I was talking about the Dracaenas and how they look a little bit washed out and they look sort of dry when they get a lot of light because they get more of a yellow tinge to them a hint of yellow instead of a creamy white. These Ikubas, they'll do the same thing. And that pot, the one that's furthest down here, I can turn the camera, you know, the one that I've been talking about that gets more light. Eventually, the ones that are in that pot were going to get very yellow. And I know that that would have bothered me down the road. I prefer these to be more on the green side than on the yellow side. The more light they get, the more yellow they get. You can tell this one right here in the very front was the one that was getting the most light. And the other ones, more shade. Yeah, I like it, just don't love it, but I know that I will, just have to get used to it. And there's also, there's so many other things I need to do in this area, which I think I'm going to go ahead and start working on. I may change this fountain up, we will see. And I was thinking about maybe putting the Monstera back here in this corner. I've always kept it on the other side of the patio until like August when the angle of the sun changes, but this windmill palm that's back there behind everything, whoa, camera, what's going on there? It's flushed out a lot. It's gotten pretty big, and I'm pretty sure there's enough shade back here to put that Monstera. I would like to have that over here where I can see it more often. That's why I've been working my way from over here and down. I don't want to start planting up this area when I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to pull these things out in order to squeeze the Monstera back there. Right, what do we think here? I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I just wanna see what it looks like. I mean, why not? I've been watching the sun over here for days. It really, there's not a ton back here. And I've had just regular Deliciosa Monsteras before out here on this wall where they got a good amount of morning light. And they were totally fine. They grew wonderfully. The tie is variegated though, but mine doesn't have much variegation on it. It's not like top of the line, primo tie constellation. So maybe that'll, it'll be fine. We'll see. If you don't try, how will we ever know, right? I'm gonna go get that tie and <laughs> move some stuff around. Need to clear a path. Well, I think it looks good there. I like having it over here. So that's, just, it's gonna have to do. Right? Yeah, it's good. I know that this hanging basket situation is kind of a mess. Those will get moved around later. I put all of the Akubas, the Akuba Japonicas here around that fountain, which I like. It is satisfying, that urge that I was having to have that lush green appeal out here. However, oh, how has my exposure been turned up like that? That was a slip of the finger. Oh, that's not that much better. So I was going to replace the center pot in this fountain with this taller blue pot that's over here. It's that one right there. That's not gonna work with that Monstera kinda coming over those edges there. So I'm gonna have to play around with this some more, at least when I finally make that move and move the fountain over there, move the pot to put in place of that one right there. I think that'll look nice having that other pot there because it's a lot taller. It'll come up higher, it has more texture to it, so they'll see more ripples going through it. And it's one of my favorite pots, so I kinda want it front and center instead of having it tucked away back over there in that corner. I'm going to put a hibiscus standard right here along the edge next to that bamboo and then in front of that probably the Bismarckia palm. Then that Australian tree fern is going to either get moved up onto the wall or back behind me towards the area where the hot tub 
is. So I think this is nice. It works. Next up, I need to get this Edenidia palm planted up and then I need to get the palm planters planted up for the front porch and that's going to be about it. If I even get to doing all of that, the forecast keeps changing. It looks like we're gonna have a bunch of rain this week. I also just realized I have a fan blowing directly on my microphone. I'm sorry if that's been obnoxious. I won't know until I'm editing. The palm planters on the front porch. I can do this while it's raining, not a big deal because it's on the front porch. This one right here, I'm thinking, hey, maybe we'll hit that tomorrow morning. I don't know. I did put some geraniums in the front here. Aren't they pretty? They're so pretty. They're the, what are they called? The Exotica series, like Tropical Sunrise or something like that, Coral Sunrise. I'll find the tag, make sure to mention during the garden tour, but I absolutely love them. They're so pretty. Stromanthe, 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 they're little. I tried to hide their pots with some seashells. This is just kind of a rough draft. I'm, I haven't even bothered with cleaning up and making sure that things are staged properly or set up and planted properly. Just wanted to get things put in their place. You already saw that whole process with these three planters right here. I was like, okay, just can keep setting things in here, playing around with them, see what I like, and then get them planted. The reflexes have grown on me. It's been a few hours. I'm liking them a lot more. It just, it was such a drastic change from those Akubas, but no, they look good there. I'm fine with those, especially like I said, once those begonias come up from the middle, that's going to look fantastic. I am, there's one thing I just noticed. One of these begonias here, uh, it's supposed to be a pink dragon's wing. See that? Is it going to focus? It looks pretty red to me. Here's a pink one. See? It's not a huge difference, but it's a difference. That could just be the flowers are needing to age out some more. There's another pink back there. I have a great big pink one right here. This one I overwintered in the garage. And I forgot to talk about that one when I brought the plants outside in the last vlog. It did so well in the garage, in the grow space over the winter time. I gave it some water occasionally. It was under grow lights. It bloomed all winter long. It needs a cut back because it's getting pretty scraggly. I need to cut it back and put it into something larger. But it just, it did phenomenal. Phenomenal, phenomenally? Whatever you get what I'm saying. I'm kicking myself for all these years I've been growing the dragon's wing begonias for never just bringing them inside before. I had no idea that they would be so easy to keep in the house. In the grow space, I should say. So that's where we are right now. That's what's going on out here. I did, I took one of those extra caladiums, one of those really pretty unidentified ones right there and I popped it up into a three gallon container and just set it back there on its own because I do like those enough that I think it would be nice to have one that's just standing alone on its own doesn't need to be mixed into another planter just down there doing its thing uh, yeah I got lots of cleaning up to do out here I don't mind that the cleaning is pretty fun I enjoy that part it's just so satisfying getting all that muck and everything swept up and washed away and lots of cords so many cords. I unearthed a ton of cords and tubes and pipes when I was moving this Monstera back here. That took a while to get that back there because the pot it's in, it's in a 22 inch or 24 inch container and the gap was really narrow. I moved all this out so that I could squeeze it back there. But it, yeah, it took a little bit. I had to move a bunch of gravel around to level out a spot for it. And underneath that gravel, I was like, oh, here's an extension cord. Oh, here's a drip line. Oh, here's another drip line. Oh, here's a broken drip emitter. These are all things that I've needed to do for a while, so I was glad to have something that kind of reminded me and triggered me to go, oh, do that, get those things cleaned up. And I was just thinking about that because I was looking down here and just saw this right here, just a broken drip emitter. Don't know what it goes to. I have a lot of work to do with the drip out here. I have done a video on drip before, and I'll put that up in the card thing at the end of the video, and I'll link it down in the description. It's a really complicated thing to talk about. Like drip in itself, it doesn't have to be super complicated, but it's something that's just so customizable to what people need for their different climates or what they're growing that it's really hard to say what you should and shouldn't do and what works best. And I'm gonna be trying some different things out this year. So I have got like my main drip set up as far as my timers go. I'm probably gonna add a few new lines to get this area all on its own drip because right now it's sharing drip with another line and there's just not enough water pressure. The way my patio is shaped with all these angles, I can't lay out a grid. If you have a grid, you have much better water pressure. Yeah, it's a whole thing. I've ordered some drip line. Instead of using emitters for my bigger pots, I'm gonna go ahead and put in a quarter inch drip line that has emitters every six inches. I think that'll work better for the water pressure. I don't know for sure though. Yeah, anyway, so that's enough of that. We'll pick back up when I'm ready to start moving on this container right here. So I'm working on the video right now. I gotta do some touch-ups and the editing and see how I'm feeling when I'm done with that. I just, these are too many updates. Nobody cares. I'm so sorry. 
sky is looking beautiful tonight. Not that you can tell. I think I have that bad battery in there that makes the camera not focus well. Look at, oh, it's so pretty. Oh, a gorgeous night. I did want to make sure to have a look at everything at nighttime because that's a big part of where and why I plant things like see how they look when it's dark out with the lights on them. That was another reason, hold on. There we go, turn that off. Very peaceful and tranquil. That is something I do like about those reflexes, the Dracaenas that are in here. That variation, lights up at nighttime, reflects at nighttime. Same thing with the Akubas and the bamboo. The light brings out all the gorgeous texture that you get on bamboo. These are messy, so messy when they flush out with new growth. Hopefully sometime soon those will actually fully flush out and they'll have even more interest and detail to them. I did a few more things, not a few more things. Actually, I've been very busy. Did a bunch of sweeping. I have an extension cord out here because I was testing the pump on the fountain that you can't see, but the one that's back there. Got the hibiscus moved over here. It's gonna get a big prune and a repot fairly soon. Same thing with this Pakistakis lutea. Needs a big prune and a repot, bird of paradise. Still on the dolly, have another, uh, what is this? Justicia carnia bubble gum, I think. An absolutely stunning begonia. I can't remember what this is called and don't get too attached to it because it's a tuberous type and me and the tuberous types, we don't always do that well together. Where's the tag? It's a Riger begonia. This might get too much sun in this spot. I'm not sure. We will have to wait and see. It's a part sun plant, but I thought that it just looked perfect over here. They have that fun, glossy foliage. It's shiny. It's kind of a silvery hue, which you'll be able to see better during the daytime, but I like things that are shiny and reflective, just in general, especially for the nighttime garden. Yeah, and I think that that looks pretty good there. Everything that's right here needs to be shifted just a smidge. I just didn't bother because I still have to get back there and take that other fountain apart that's over there. But the idea is that this wall be scooted over and back somewhat, like I said. Prune jobs and things, Bismarckias over here, that needs to be potted up too. I and mean, it's doing well in the pot that it's in. It's just in its black nursery container. I'd like for it to be in something that looks a little bit better than that, but also, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Things are looking really pretty. I don't know if I'm gonna get that Adenidia palm potted up right now or not, because I don't know, I feel like I already did an awful lot. Oh, so much color. I moved Mr. Freckles down, Freckles, the Freckles Croton down here. Got the Ficus Lorata up there, windmill palms up on the wall. This area over here is still a mess. I just got started on this, this whole spot. So I still need to properly pot up those Heliconias and get the plants kind of worked in this area better. I'm hesitant to do too much with this spot because at some point the hot tub people are supposed to come and get this thing and take it to the shop. What Several weeks ago when I said they were coming to fix it, they tried, but they didn't. It's still leaking, so they said they were going to come and take it to the shop, and then they showed up, couldn't lift it. We told them to bring extra people. They didn't, and then when they were supposed to come back again, they called and said, eh, we're pretty backed up. We might get to it in a few months. <laughs> what? It's <laughs> good that business is booming. Anyways, that's not a big deal. Geraniums, I set a begonia in there just to see what it would look like. Got another alocasia back there, the Portora. Don't need to go too in depth here because there will be a garden tour coming out after this video, but I just thought, since this is what I've been working on, I should go ahead and show it off, especially at nighttime. So I need to fix this situation. I'll get to it. Oh, so pretty, so much color, so much texture. It's just giving me those fun tropical vibes, but in a peaceful way, not like just messy jungle. That's how I used to do things. And it, I mean, it, it's, it's not tidy right now, that's for sure. Past few years, I've been going for more of like a calm, like Polynesian-y type thing, as best as you can do when you live in zone six. And I don't like to do it things so up to the point where it looks overly intentional. Does that make any sense? That's why I try and blend things that are hardy with things that aren't hardy and use special things as annuals in a few spots like having bromeliads instead of maybe an impatien in place of those little little things like that, but not like just too much. Sometimes it can get to be too loud. I've done it plenty of times. So just have great big huge leaves plants everywhere with just hibiscus all over the place, which I love all those plants, but I just want to make sure to space them out properly so that nothing is just way too in the face. Yeah, that's all. I got the umbrella planter set here. I think it's time to redo this. Those Sansevierias, Dracaenas, those have been in there for a very, very, very long time. Like, I don't know, three or four years probably. I really don't, actually don't remember when I did this planter. Maybe just a couple of years, but they've gotten to look sort of overrun 
and messy. I think that it would look nice to put something that's lower in there so that when you're sitting here at the table, they're not going to be blocking the view of whoever's on the other side. But I'm happy to have it over here for right now. Looks good. Really easy plants too. I don't do anything with this in the winter. If they get a drink here and there, put them under a grow light, that's it. I think that's going to do it. I know I had mentioned planting up the adenidias and those things on the front porch, but I'm gonna hold off on that just a little bit longer because they're looking kind of scraggly still. It's gonna take them all to snap out of that. That's the only reason I haven't brought them back over here yet because they're still recovering from the spider mite nightmare that they had to endure. Thanks everyone for hanging out. Hey Tobes, how you doing Toby? You got your cup over there? I put some peanut butter in there and froze it and he had a great time trying to look that thing clean. Don't worry, no xylitol, it's totally safe. There's still plenty to walk around and talk about. But like I said, there's a garden tour coming up so We'll wait for all that. Thanks for hanging out while I get things planted up and get to enjoy the new table. Talk about plans of things that are going on over here. Lots of fun things happening. It really finally feels like summer. I'm gonna get, I'll get that stuff up into the attic tomorrow before it starts raining, I promise. I'm gonna get this all fixed up. Comment down below. What's going, see that umbrella? Gotta get a new one, that looks terrible. But it works, that's all that matters. But yeah, comment down below, love talking to y'all. What's everybody up to, having fun? outside in your gardens. Hopefully, I know some of y'all are still waiting for spring to kick in. We just got here just like, I don't know, a week ago. It was late, but better late than never, right? I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, look at it's so beautiful out here. The sky is gorgeous tonight. I'd go swimming, but the pool's full of grackle poop. Grackles are a bird that they bag up their little poopies from their babies and they dump them in the pool. It's a genius way to keep your nest clean, but it's not. I try and just avoid the water. They'll be gone in like a week or two. It's fine. I keep on growing. That moon making me so happy. I completely forgot. I don't think Pumpkin's been in this video one time. I know y'all let me know about it if she hasn't been in the video. Okay, Pumpkin, say hi real quick. Say hello to everybody. You sleepy? I know. I woke you up. I'm sorry, Pumpkin. I'm so sorry. Such a sweetheart. Smudge is gone. She left a few days ago. Okay, actually leaving this time. Bye. Bye.